Once again, today we greet you in that name that's far above every name, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good to see you here in the auditorium of Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. May the Lord bless you. And to you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour. It's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping that our coming up with can be an inspiration to everyone. And I'd appreciate it if you get on your phone out there and call a friend. Have them to tune in and get this good hour. We feel we can be a blessing to them. And remember this tape is tape 341. And you get the singing, the music, and the message all on this tape. Pray for me and write to me. Take your Bible and turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. It's page 1280 in the original Scofield Reference Bible. Page 1280. If you don't have the original Scofield Reference Bible, you ought to sell your coat and get you one. I have a few available in my study that I can help you out on the price. Not in the Bible selling business, but I get a few along and I can get a good bargain on them that I might be able to help uh, people that like to have the Schofield Reference Bible. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'm speaking on the subject, perilous times are now upon us. Verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despise of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, loves of pleasures more than loves of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort of they which creep in the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now that's as far as I'm reading today from uh, chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. Now, whenever you follow me in the scriptures or look at the Bible, you can say, Preach Edwards, these things are being fulfilled now. That's true. Perilous times are now upon us. And that word perilous means dangerous times. We're living in dangerous days. The most dangerous days I've ever known anything about. You're not safe anywhere anymore. Just last week, a man riding down the highway and had his daughters in the Jeep with him and somebody threw a couple of cement blocks off of the overhead that, uh, that crosses over the, the I-75, I believe, and uh, hit the man's windshield, caused him to wreck his Jeep and killed him. And there, of course, uh, uh, damaged his little daughters in the Jeep there with him. Now, why would a person do that? What what in the world would cause people to do a thing like that? Just deliberately throw those blocks over there on top of those automobiles and taking this man's life. That's pathetic. That's a shame. Now that's a sign of the end times. It's perilous times now upon us. Down here around uh, Lexington, just yesterday I believe, a uh, day before a man and his family drives into their home and when they came into the home and started in the house, there was the escaped prisoner on the inside. And of course, the, the man, the owner of the home, the man that dwelled there, engaged the prisoner into a struggle, and the prisoner stabbed the man to death and killed him. He died. Why in the world would people do a thing like that? It's dangerous now. Anywhere you go, you're not safe any place anymore. You need to realize that. In many of our northern cities, people won't get out at night, especially women in Chicago and New York and Detroit and other places where they're killing people every night and every day. Uh, people are afraid to get out at night. And it's come the time now when many people have to bar their windows and doors uh, to be safe on the inside. Now, there was a time when you put that criminal behind bars 
But that's not true anymore, necessarily. You put yourself behind bars. And that criminal stays in prison for a while, enjoys his vacation, and soon out on the street, doing the same old thing again, committing crime, robbing, stealing, and killing. Now, prisoners today, they got it made, many of them in prison, never had it so good in this life, and now they get good clothing and food to eat and recreation and TV and whatnot, and they're enjoying themselves in many prisons today. They don't mind going back. Some of them get into trouble, go back on purpose, that they might go back to prison. And it's dangerous today to walk down the street anymore or ride down the highway because about half the people you meet on the highway today are there under the influence of alcohol. We have some 140 million uh, drinkers in America today, and you have 18 million sot drunks, and many of them on the highway. And then there's the dope in the land today, and people kill you. They'll steal what you have. They'll do everything they can to get money to buy dope because they're hooked. And it's dangerous. We're living in perilous times. Whether you know it or not or believe it or not, we are. We're living in those days right now. And Paul said, no, you're not. In the last days, perilous times shall come. It's dangerous. I'm not a pessimist. I'm a truthist. It's not going to get any better. Crime's going to get worse. More and more killing, more robbing, more stealing. More people on uh, alcohol, more people on dope, more people raping and things of that type. It's going to get worse and worse and worse as we move toward the end of this age. Because the liberals today in America is filling our land with criminals by uh, overturning death penalties, by letting them out of prison, by opposing uh, uh, the gun, uh, that is opposing people having guns in their homes and things of that type. Uh, they're adding to the crime wave and putting criminals on the street. You're welcome. If you don't like it, you leap it, lump it, leave it, jump up, bump it, or whatever you want to do. I'm telling the truth anyway. The liberals in America is adding to the crime system and crime wave in America. They want to do away with guns in your home, and then they encourage the killing of unborn babies where a million and a half been killed every year. They're for that. That they dance about there, they're proud of that, but they want to take your guns away from you. They want to turn the criminals loose and let them go free in America. See, we're in sad shape today. And not only that, are you listening to me? Let me have your ears just a minute. If you haven't read the article in the July Reader's Digest uh, entitled Getting Away with Murder, you ought to read that article. By all means, you ought to read that article. You'll go to some doctor's office, some office where they take the magazine, you find it on the table, uh, get you a magazine, borrow the magazine, and read that article, uh, Getting Away With Murder. You owe it to yourself and your family to do that, because if this man that's involved in this article goes in the White House, woe be unto this nation. God help us. We are in trouble today as certain as the world. And we're living in the last days in perilous times. It said, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Have you ever seen a time when men are so proud and such great lovers of themselves? People stuck on themselves, filled with pride. God said that would happen in the end time. These are the perilous times we're in. Men lovers of their own selves. There used to be a time when people would help their neighbors. Some of you old timers can recall back in your days of boyhood, whenever the dear farm out there got sick, the other farmers would get together and give him a day or two and plant out his crop. You don't find that happening anymore. People not helping their neighbors anymore. A lot of people don't even know that's taking place in your house or in your community or whatnot. Now, God wants us to be sure that we know as much as possible what's going on in our household. The Bible said disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Now, do you listen to me, young people? Would you like to live a long time on the earth? The Bible says if you do, then obey your parents in the Lord. Live a long time. Unthankful. I believe that's one of the greatest sins of America is the old sin of being unthankful. We don't thank God what we have. We throw away and squander away more right here in America, food I'm talking about, even clothing and various other things 
than the average nation has to live on. That's a sad situation. People are starving to death, and we'll throw it in the garbage can every day. Now, Jesus said, be saving. He didn't say it in those words, but when he fed the multitude, he said, don't leave anything, don't waste anything, take up what's left, and took up 12 basketfuls. Now, we need to realize that God expects us to be saving and be thankful for what you have. We're living in a day of gluttony. People buy more than they can eat and they sit down and eat more than they need to. We need to just buy what we need and what we can eat and not sit down and, and glut and, and uh, fill our stomachs and become uh, overweight and die with high blood pressure, heart attacks and whatnot. Now we need to do that. Oh, you say, preacher, aren't you a little overweight? Yes, I'm about 10 pounds overweight. Need to get it off. Pray for me. Now, you know how hard it is to get weight off this day and time, and I'm, I want to do it. And, uh, and you need to do it if you're overweight. And you need to try to get it off, not sit down and gobble up everything that's on the table just because it's there. Now, we're guilty of doing that. Now, the Bible says we need to be temperate in all things. And that's one thing we're not temperate in. We just can't, we just can't let her go. We've got to sit down and eat and eat and eat and eat. And dig our grave with our teeth. That's exactly what we're doing. And I'm guilty and you're guilty. And be good if we could uh, do something about that sin. There is a sin. Unthankful. The Bible says unholy. Without natural affection. Now why are these men living together like a husband and wife? Two men living together. Why are two women living together uh, like a husband and wife? Oh, uh, they call them, uh, well, they're not gays. They don't look, don't look gay to me. They look like they, uh, the whole world's turned them on them, and which I guess they are, but they're plain old queers. Now, they used to call them queers. Back, that was their name. That's what they are. And they stole a beautiful name, the name gay, one of the most beautiful names that we have in this land. Those queers stole that name, and there's nothing gay about them. Nothing gay about that crowd. It's a bunch of sodomites, and God had them destroyed in his day. And then there's the Lisbons. They fit right in the women there. The same crowd. God destroyed them back in Sodom and Gomorrah. The Bible is against that, and they're trying their best to become uh, uh, popular and be recognized among a society as any other group. But God doesn't recognize that crowd as being equal with any other group. They're all sinners. They're all on the road to hell, going to hell, if they don't repent and get right with God. But they want to be recognized as any other group in the land. That can't be. You can't do that without destroying the Word of God. And you can't destroy the Word of God. God had them destroyed in Sodom and Gomorrah. God burned them up. He dropped the atomic bomb on them. And so God feels the same way about them then, or now as He does then. But we wonder what God's waiting on about destroying. But I'll tell you where God's working this thing out now. Instead of dropping the atomic bomb, he sent the AIDS among them. See, that's where the AIDS got started, among the queers. And that they uh, it got started and, and all over the world now. And it's going to destroy thousands and thousands of people. And uh, instead of God dropping the atomic bomb, he just let them get that disease with no cure to it. Now it's like... Uh, the, the heart disease, you don't have any cure for heart disease, like cancer, you don't have any real cure for cancer, and you don't have any cure for AIDS, and probably never will have. And it's going to destroy a large number of the American population, and all over this world, that's a curse. Now you listen to me, that's a curse that God Almighty has sent upon the uh, homosexual community, and then among others that take dope and, and use those uh, uh, same needles, and uh, get, get AIDS in that manner and so forth. It's a curse and it's prevalent more so among the dope addicts and the homosexuals than any other group. That's a curse that God sent upon that body and it's not pleasing to God. And of course, God is trying to use the taxpayers' money to find a cure for it, but I doubt they'll ever find a cure for it. It's very doubtful to me they ever will. And it may destroy thousands and thousands. It may be somewhat like the Black Plague that hit Europe many years ago. I hope not. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Now, these people are without natural affection. Two men fall in love with each other like a man and wife. Two women fall in love with each other like a man and wife. Living together like a man and wife. Wanting to adopt children like a man and wife. That's unnatural affection. 
That's contrary to human nature and common sense and the word of God. That should not be. That's a terrible sin. And the Bible says without natural affection, truth breakers, truth breakers all over the land today, whenever they get a truce, uh, they think to uh, settle against a truce, then they somebody come along and break the thing and they're fighting again. You ought to the United Nations. Now they're trying to get the war stopped between Iraq and Iran. And those jaybirds up there in that United Nations have been sitting there eight years and haven't done one thing in eight years. And America's footing most of the bill. Now the United Nations is just a hotbed for spies. And they ought to move the thing over yonder around Iraq and Iran in old Babylon. That's where it's going to eventually wind up. Over that old Babylon, I'll go ahead and move it right away because we're putting the bill anyway, doing nothing up there. I heard last night, the night before last, haven't done anything in eight years. Just sit up and bat the eyes like a frog in a hailstorm until I ran Iraq, decided they want to talk a little bit. Now they try and do something about that. Haven't done it, and we're paying the bill. We're paying the bill. Ought to move it to Babylon. Move it over there around Iraq and Iran. That's where it'll be during the tribulation period and we ought to get it over there right away. Quit taking our taxpayers' money and paying back a bunch of spies, some of them up there, all over the nation coming in there and taking and living a life of ease here in the fat of the land in America. It's not right. I'm against it 100%. And I'd tell anybody else the same thing. Now, the Bible said the um, truce breakers false accuse us. I don't have time to elaborate on that. Incontinent, that is... Um, uncontrolled sex life that's what that means in the end time there'll be uncontrolled sex life why is it to me so many women being raped here in Athens why is there so many women being raped in Atlanta and other places uncontrolled sex life God said that would happen that's in commonly tells us here uncontrolled sex life furious furious that means people are violent mean ungodly They'll abuse people. They'll abuse little children. They'll uh, pour hot scalding water on human beings. They'll beat them to a pup. They'll take knives and cut their bodies to pieces and scatter them along the highway. What makes them do that? Well, the Bible said they're fearless. They have fear, no fear of God before their eyes. They're devil possessed. Devil possessed. Uh, born to be destroyed. Beast, brute beast, born to be destroyed. And, beloved, all that is happening before our very eyes. And the despised of those that are good. Now, people that serve God and love God despised by this ungodly world. You better believe that. People that, that love God is not going to be loved by this ungodly world. That's why a lot of people don't like me. I preach to them, expose their sins, and they don't like that. And so the Bible said then they are uh, traitors, heady, high-minded, and lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. I have to emphasize there. I have to stand here and tell you that people are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Well, you know that. People drive for miles to see sports. Drive for miles to engage in sports. Spend hundreds of dollars to do so. Spend their time out here in recreation and sports. How much money would they put in the church? Nothing. Many of them wouldn't put a dime in the church. Why? They don't love God. They love pleasures more than lovers of God. If you spend money for different kinds of sports, I don't care what kind it is, and you participate in it, and you don't put in the money in the church, then you don't love God. You don't appreciate what God's done. Your lovers are pleasures more than lovers of God. First of all, you need to give God his part of your income. And when you give God his part, which is at least a tenth, then what you do with the other be your business. But you have so many God robbers. They'll empty their pocketbooks. They'll drive for miles. They'll spend hours and hours and even days out engaging in sport activities and wouldn't put a dime in the church to save your neck. Why? They care nothing about God. They care nothing about the church. They care nothing about things that are decent in the house of God. They're more concerned about sports out there than the other things of God. And that's a low down shame. And God said, loves the place more than loves the God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And I'm going to have to cut off right there. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. What are you talking about, preacher? The average 12 year old today can tell you just about what's taking place in the average church. 
because they've been there many times and they just have a form of godliness. They go through a formality. Everything just like every son and no power, nothing taking place, just a form of godliness. And the churches like that all over America have a little formality and that's it. And uh, no, no power of the Holy Ghost, no real joy, no real expounding of the word of God, no real down to earth preaching, no real shouting and praising God, no amens. Nobody rejoicing, nobody getting saved, nobody coming back to God. Just have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. What we need is the power of the Holy Ghost upon our services. That's the crying need of the hour. Praying down God's power upon our services. We need that as more than any other one thing I know of today. We need the power of God in our services. Many churches today, they... They start at 11 sharp and end at 12 dull and then the dead rise and go home. That's about the way it is in most of them. And so we need to realize we need the power of the Holy Ghost. God comes in great power, then stay there and let God bless you and help you. We need that, need that in this day in which we live. Our little cut and dried programs today, little social programs are not getting the job done. And sinners are dying and going to hell. We need to pray down the power of God. We need one or two to get on fire. And if we had one or two to get on fire, then others to catch on fire. And the fire would be contagious and have others to catch on fire. And we have the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit and the fire of God. And we see great things happen. That's exactly what we need today. There used to be a time when I put a gospel tent up on Sunday afternoon, fill the thing up, preach the gospel. And dozens would come to God. You go out here now and put up a gospel tent on Sunday afternoon and say we're going to have a service and uh, you used be sitting out there with a baker's dozen. You'd have a good business to have a dozen. Now why have a form of God that's not the power of God and people are sitting at home looking at the ball game on TV than to go to a gospel service on Sunday afternoon? You know I'm telling you the truth. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Worldly, forgot God, don't love God like we once did. And that's our trouble today. Used to be a time when the church is first and people be there and some hour before starting time to get in on the services. Looking forward to it. That's not anymore. A lot of people come to church with a dread. They kind of dread to come. And they say, well, I uh, hope preach don't preach too long today. And then they go and no heart in it, no concern, no desire, a form of God is no power of God, no joy. And they just come and go for respectability. And that's about it. You know I'm telling you the truth. What are you saying, preacher? The Bible says in the last days, perilous times shall come. Now I've mentioned that. I preached just a little longer because having a fool with this tape recorder here, uh, let the thing knock off. And I don't know how much I've missed on the tape. I want us to get that other one fixed up as soon as possible. And it operates from the inside. And. So I'm just trying to get a little more on the tape. I probably missed 10 or 15 minutes of my message uh, by fooling with this. I didn't know the thing had run out. And so maybe we can get the other one ready by next Sunday. We had some problems with it. Maybe we can get it ready by next Sunday. But I have enough message on this tape here to help us all if we listen to it. God bless you. Appreciate you listening. Let's stand to our feet. Have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I pray today in Jesus' name that... You take the message and use it. We live in perilous time, momentous days. Our Father, we don't know what's going to happen next. And God help us to realize that Jesus is soon coming. And we're living in the, these perilous times. We need to be ready. The Bible says we can see that day approaching. Have you with the invitation, our Father? Bless, lead, God and direct. In Christ's name, amen. Now, Debbie is going to play for us as she plays on the organ for uh, no, uh, stands or so. If you're here, if you need to get saved, you want to come back to God, you want to join the church, uh, for any reason, you want to come forward, you feel free to respond to the invitation while we wait. Walk, walk, walk down the aisle. Tony, he'll help you. I'll help you. We want to help you. You come.